Greetings and welcome to the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Um, I'm happy to have you here once again as we uh, share God's word and God's promises for us here online. Just uh, kind of a note about the readings today as we gather. Uh, today is about the Jesus healing the ten lepers. And of course these ten lepers cried out from a distance, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Their condition cut them off from God and others. So also do the works of the flesh cut us off from God and others. As Paul writes in Galatians, you know, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And thus we cry out with the lepers, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we eagerly seek his good gifts, Jesus said to the lepers, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. So, too, we walk by faith and not by sight, being confident of Jesus' help before we see any evidence of it, trusting that Jesus' cleansing words of forgiveness will restore us to wholeness in the resurrection. Let us be as the one leper who returned to the true high priest to give him thanks and glory. For Jesus bore our infirmities in his sacrifice at Calvary. His words are life to those who find them and health to all of their flesh. Let's uh, begin our formal service with a, uh, an opening hymn. And I thought today we would do uh, LSB number 507, Holy, Holy, Holy. Trinity. 
We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Dear brothers and sisters, if this is your confession, then upon that confession I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16. Uh, in the Hebrew alphabet, as they're alphabetized through there, it, it's bait. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the just decrees of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight, as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes, I will not forget your word. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, 
have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your church with your perpetual mercy. And because of our frailty, we cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this week is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on, for they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of righteousness is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today is Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Our epistle for today is from Paul's letter to the Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter, where we are told to walk by the Spirit. Paul writes, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Lord. 
On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon for today is based on that beautiful short gospel lesson about the ten lepers, and it's titled, Giving Thanks. The grace, mercy, and peace of Christ Jesus rest upon each and every one of you this day. As we turn our attention to this gospel lesson today, we hear that the Samaritan leper, upon recognizing the fact that he'd been completely healed of his leprosy, took the time to return to Jesus, fall on his face, and praise God with a loud voice. Now, there's a ton of good theology just in the fact that this guy praised God by praising Jesus. This fellow, this outsider, this Samaritan, recognized God in the person of Jesus. Praising Jesus is praising God in the flesh. Think about that. Think about the effect that this divine great reversal has on this man. He returns unafraid and full of joy into the very presence of Almighty God in order to fall on his face in thanksgiving and praise God. But what about the other nine? I don't doubt that they were thankful too. Wouldn't you be? I mean, talk about a great reversal. Having been healed of their leprosy and declared clean by the priests according to the Levitical law, they could now return to the land of the living. They were no longer ostracized or forsaken, abandoned to the outskirts of humanity. They were no longer sentenced to be outside looking in. The Lord Jesus, by his grace, worked a miracle of great reversal that went far beyond simple medical healing. It was, in a very real sense, a resurrection unto new life. They were given a second chance at life. I wonder, how many of you would like a second chance? How many of you would like some do-overs, or for the golfers out there, some mulligans? Well, these guys were getting all of that, and more. But in all of their excitement and haste, they forgot to return thanks and praise the one who made it all happen. They cried out to Jesus for mercy from a distance as the law required. And he drew near to them and gave them the gift of grace. He gave them all that they didn't deserve. Doesn't that itself deserve a little praise and thanksgiving? Surely they could take five extra minutes out of their day, and just as you could take five extra minutes out of your day, and thank and praise God for the gift of new life that you're being given? Well, in this gospel reading, the Lord certainly thought so. Where are the other nine? He asks. They were healed too. 
only the Samaritan turns back? Now here's the thing. We all get this. It's not hard to understand. But my question for you is, do you offer up thanks and praise to God in all circumstances? Well, I will confess to you that I don't. Like the lepers in our gospel lesson, my conversations with Christ often sound more like pathetic complaints than simple petitions of thanks and praise. It's very easy to render thanks and praise for the things going our way. However, when the going gets tough, the concept of actually praising God tends to get more and more distant from our minds as the going gets tougher, as times get rougher, as things get harder for you. It's very easy to forget about all that we have and instead of that get hung up on what we've lost or what we don't have. And it's far easier for us to blame God in these difficult circumstances than it is to offer him thanks and praise. And this leads us to another difficult question. Why? Why should we give thanks and praise to the Lord, especially when the chips aren't falling in our favor, especially when life is not going the way we want it to? Consider these words from Psalm 100. Give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Notice that we are not told to give thanks unto the Lord only because he has really hooked us up. How many of you are thankful for everything God has given you? But you know that you could be more thankful if you didn't have all those bills coming in, or those aches and pains you feel every morning, or the fear and uncertainty of not knowing how your plans or desires are going to shake out. If God only gave you tomorrow what you were thankful for today, how would that change how you prayed? Should it change how you pray? Is that why you praise God? So that he'll scratch your back by giving you all kinds of good stuff? Well, we understand what it means to praise God for all that we have. That's a no-brainer. We even understand what it means to give thanks to God for all that we don't have including bad things, such as terrible sicknesses, homelessness, bankruptcy, violence, etc. We give thanks that God spares us from these terrible tragedies, and rightly so. We give thanks for those absences in our lives, but we need to be careful in doing so. Such praise can be a real slippery slope into sin. Remember, a certain Pharisee thanked and praised God for the absences in his life too, giving thanks that he wasn't like the tax collector. I'm reminded of my favorite prophet in the Bible, Jonah. Even when he's in the belly of the fish, he's still saying, Thank you, Lord, for not making me like those scum Ninevites. But what about those other absences? What about those things that we really do want and ask for and don't receive? Have you ever praised God after he has clearly said no to you? I've never heard anyone give thanks for not winning the lottery. I've never heard anyone praise God for the gift of diminishing health. Thank you, God, for my cancer. I don't think those words get spoken very often, and understandably so. How many of you have praised God when the great reversals you're looking for, the great reversals you are counting on, didn't happen? Why then do we praise and thank God? Because he is good, and his steadfast love and mercy endures forever. We offer up our thanks and praise to God simply because he has seen fit to bless us with blessings beyond all measure. Don't believe me? Ask one of our seasoned members what a blessing it is to simply wake up and stand on their own two feet. And of course, this is still only looking at reasons to give thanks from a worldly or material standpoint. I have my health, so I will thank the Lord. What if you didn't have your health? What if you were at death's door and quite literally putting your toe across the hold? Do you still have reason to fall on your face and praise God? Yes. Our Lord's mercy and love endures forever. It's eternal. Have you ever thought about what that means? Look at this cross. 
Here is where God himself declared victoriously, it is finished, once and for all. Here is all the reason in the world to praise and thank God, always and in every circumstance. Here is your great reversal from death to life. It doesn't matter how bad things may be or how much worse they may get. This cruciform fact is always and will always remain eternally true. Your God and Lord willingly gave up his life on a cross, suffering an eternity's worth of sin and sorrow for the entire world, all so that you could be truly made well and have the absolutely free gift of eternal life with him in heaven. So here is your merciful, gracious Lord drawing near to you, kneeling down from heaven in order to strengthen you with his forgiveness. The guilt, the shame, the sin, all gone. Just think about what's going on here. The Lord of heaven and earth comes to you, in spite of you, and for you. And here he is with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, right here, for you. As we sing in one of the divine services, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. This is what the faithful Samaritan leper was all about. And I pray that this is what you're all about too. In his name and to his glory. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with our offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. As each petition ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy, you are invited to respond with, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the innumerable blessings you have bestowed on us especially for the revelation of your will and grace in Jesus Christ, your Son. Preserve for your church the pure doctrine of your saving word. Raise up pastors to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name. And fill all your baptized children with your spirit and his fruits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, remember the enemies of your church. Grant them repentance and amendment of life, that they would know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be joined to the communion of your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all those who are returning soon to school, give diligence in their studies, respect toward their teachers, and a desire to grow in knowledge. Keep students, teachers, and staff safe from every danger. Bless especially the schools, universities, and seminaries of our synod and our sister synod in the United States. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our leaders, for our national and provincial governments, and for our judges, and we pray that they would defend and protect life from the womb to the grave. We give thanks also for all those whose duty it is to protect and serve in our communities. Watch over them as they carry out their duties and protect them and us from violence and every ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters, we implore you to visit the sick, the suffering, the homebound, the grieving, and all who stand in need. Whatever their trials, have mercy on them. Comfort them with the knowledge that nothing can separate them from the love you have for them in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Although we are worthy of none of the things for which we pray, we ask that you would grant them all to us by grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn that I've chosen for today is Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. I figured something good and solid would keep us going through the week until we can meet again. Hymn number 761, if you have the LSB hymnal, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure, cleanse me from guilt and power not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands could my zeal no respite know could my tears forever flow all for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Make it come to thee for dress, Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyelids close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of God and the strength of the cross that Jesus came for you give you cause to give thanks and praise for everything in your life each and every day. God bless you all.